countries in a crowd of 200,000 200, people in an event that is hosted in Jaya, Dubai called Jitex. Uh, we did it last year. It was a fantastic show. We had five winners and I'm so proud to share that out of five of them, three of them emerged as multi-million dollar businesses in less than six months. And just to let you know, people, that out of those five, four were coming from college, just like you. And th there was just one that came from an institution, from an institutional background, but four of them were coming from college. They had an idea that they initiated. And with the help of the mentorship they got, they were able to convert that idea into a reality, into a business. And hence today, I mean, you can see their uh, te testimonials on our website. You can see their representations on our YouTube channel. And you would be surprised to see the kind of evolution they have been through from an idea to a multi-million dollar business. Right, so that's the idea behind Biston, and hence we didn't call it a hackathon, we didn't call it a business uh, competition, we called it as a Biston, a business and a hackathon coming together to produce value to this space. Right, that's the idea behind Biston. Now, let's quickly jump to what how to build your first Web3 startup. And because we are limited by time, so I'm I, I would request to put up questions. Um, put up anything that you need to know, anything that you want to know from, from me today, or if not today, then whenever you would like to know, you know, just, just feel free to put up a questions, ask that question that you have in your mind. Okay. Quickly jumping on, jumping on to, uh, the topic of the session today. What is the difference between a startup and a web three startup? <laughs> I mean, if you ask me this question as an investor, as a VC, I would say none because as a VC, I would just evaluate two things, right? I would evaluate your market size, number one. And secondly, I will evaluate the, the kind of uh, skills the team possess to work on that idea to build into a business and scale that business. But as a mentor today, I've, there are some differences. And let's quickly jump onto that, right? Web3 is a technology that is decentralized in space, that is decentralized in nature, meaning that you don't have one, two, three, four, five people governing a, governing a business. There are no just 20, 30 shareholders that are running your business, that are governing the decisions. Web3 means that there could be thousands and hundreds and thousands of people who would come together to run a business. Now, how does it help? It's because of its decentralization, there is no single point of failure. So tomorrow, the founder of the company cannot, just cannot, even they want to, they cannot do anything with the data, number one. So your data becomes secure. It becomes transparent. It becomes uh, the owners, the users, the providers of the data becomes the owners of the data. That's one change that Web3 brings. And second is that it eliminates a single point of failure, which means again, that not one decision can actually make or break your company. Rather, your, rather the decisions the, made by the group of people, the governing body, the governance, which is token holders, which is participants of your business, are the ones who make a decision about your business, right? Well, let's take a very simple example. Let's take an example of a bank. When you do a transaction and you tra transfer money from one place to the other, to the other person, what happens is money moves from your account to the bank and the account authorities again hold held by the bank. And the bank is the one who decides how much fees will I charge for that money movement and how much fee, and when should I transfer that money? And you become at the mercy of those banking protocols, which we have seen have failed miserably back in 2008, when we saw a huge failure by the so-called banking professionals. Now, does that mean that Web3 can replace banks? No, I'm sorry, no, it's not possible. So first, first, uh, first thing that you, first learning of the session, 
is that don't think that web3 can exist independently blockchain technology comes as a complement to the existing traditional world so whenever you are building on a business think of it like a additional problem solving factor or a feature that you have introduced just to make sure that the existing business gets more efficient and that's where defi came into the picture now we 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 recently saw i don't know how much of you how many of you are following markets but we recently saw a lot of uh, blockchain companies hello am i audible because it seems like the screen is frozen am i audible hi Sir. yes you are audible great uh siddhant could you please enable the chat i would like to see the questions i know you know in i have seen uh students i've seen people putting up uh irrelevant things not so good things but it's fine it's, it's a part of the part of the world right from with every good thing comes a bad thing so it's it's fine please open the chat sir it's open because it says chat and channel meetings is only available to team members uh sir the chat is open okay great thank you all right all right great so now coming to the uh, the first learning again um blockchain technology is a complement to the existing traditional technology so whenever you are thinking of an idea a idea could be a simple defi platform what does defi mean defi means decentralized finance so all your banking operations are happening on a decentralized protocol which means for example let's say you own a home today and you want to take a loan against it a loan against property what you do is you take a you make a list of documents you prepare those documents even though your home has a value but you still go and make a list of those documents you go to a bank you request them can you please give me a loan of this amount they decide the amount of loan you should be disbursed and by the way just to let you know there are so many discrepancies in that you know the 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 relationship manager at his or her own discretion decides how much loan you should get what is the what is the value of your property and how about what kind of uh, rate of interest will you get all obviously they put it in the under the a list of jargon of you know credit score and all a lot, lot of these things but at the end of the day if you look at it from a very minute angle you would see that it depends on that one person but let's look at blockchain there is a smart contract that says if the amount of loan validated by these number of people is put up on 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 the on blockchain uh, smart contract there is an yeah okay there is a hand raised but let me just finish this right so as soon as there is a property value that comes on the smart contract the smart contract decides how much loan value should be disbursed and immediately what you see is a very quick process without any intermediary of disbursing a loan against a asset had it been pretty and now you know this is what simple defi means this is decentralized finance right take an example of an artist when they make when they make a um, they make their music they make their creations what they do they have to reach out to these so called label houses record labels which takes away 80% of the value these uh, creations earn from the public and the artist gets 20% and the record label takes the ownership of that asset so tomorrow if that becomes viral you being the creator do not get any access to those future potential earnings whereas if you build it in a web3 technology what you do is you make a smart contract you say that this piece of creation let's take an example of music you know we all all are fans of arijit singh raftar raps and uh, hip hop music whatever 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 right so we they when they create a music let's imagine they put it on a smart contract and say that whenever anyone earns it or buys that uh, song to be played in any place i get x amount of money for my in my wallet so till perpetuity they would earn the money the future potential earnings from them and as a matter of fact they don't need a record label to do that the smart contract which is coded and which does not depends on any discretion of a person 
is doing that activity. So that's again, a simple idea executed on web three. So when now coming to, you know, what, what do you need to do when you are thinking of building a web three startup? The first thing uh, to all the people who are raising hands, just give me three, four more minutes and I'll, I'll be ready to take questions. The first thing that you should do is identify, understand that your market target market today is a retail user base, a retail user who understands and is just using the product because blockchain brings decentralization. So you first have to identify your target market. You first have to understand that your product can be used by the people who understands technology. Unfortunately, there are not everyone understands technology. They cannot operate wallets. They cannot operate uh, web, web apps, mobile apps. And hence your target markets get lit, little, uh, slightly reduced. So now you have to think of, you have to, when you are building a product, don't bring up a solution, which you know is really good, but cannot be used by a, by common public because they don't understand technology, right? If I go today and I, you know, in a remote, in a remote area in India, and I say, Hey, you know what people, uh, I'm, I'm launching a mobile app. I, I'm launching a DeFi protocol. Now you can become a bank. you you can become your own bank. People would be like, no, 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 no. You know, because we don't know how to use a wallet. I don't know what is MetaMask. I don't know what is trust wallet. I don't know how to move assets. What is cryptocurrency by the way? Right. And I mean, obviously I built a fantastic solution, but I didn't go to the right target market. I didn't go to the right people. And hence, when you are building a first web three startup, first of all, find that who would be the potential user. So a potential user would be the people who understand technology. So then think of a solution of how, what kind of problems these people of te who understand technology are facing. That's number one. Number two, understand and identify your players and participants of your ecosystem player here, meaning participants. So for example, when you're building an NFT marketplace, there are three users. NFT marketplace is a simple platform like OpenSea, where you go, you create, make an, make a, make an uh, creation, you know, a song, a dance, an acting, uh, uh, audition, anything. And then you say, you know, I want to uh, bid, I want to auction this uh, asset that I've created because I feel that I have, a, I, I see a lot of potential, but I don't know where to go. I don't, I don't have retail, uh, you know, uh, I don't have uh, label houses to help me. So what I'll do is I'll create an NFT and I'll update, upload it on OpenSea. Now it's a marketplace. Someone would come and say, you know, I would like to bid that for hundred dollars. The other person would say, no, I want it more. I want it for $120. Similarly, there are multiple auction techniques and this auction happens. So in a marketplace, now you can be, you are ready to sell your creations without needing any intermediary party. So now you would say, you know, what's the difference between a web two and a web three startup? I can do that on a mobile app. You can now let, to explain the difference between what is the difference. Let's go back. Uh, let's, let's see how, uh, this difference has been created. I don't know how much, how many of you know, Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, the creator of the first EBM chain, uh, Ethereum. But when he was third, in back in 2013, when you hear his story, he would tell you that, why did he come up with that idea of Ethereum? He was playing a game and he built a lot of assets. You know, we all play games we built a lot of assets. You know, it could be swords, it could be collections, it could be quest rewards. But if you are playing on a, a game on a platform, which is centralized in nature, the founder of that game can say one fine day, get up in the morning and say, oh, you know what? I don't feel like running this game anymore. Let's take away everything that the users owned and your assets is gone. Your asset is over. You, you played hours and days and months and nights and your asset is over now. But let's look at Web3. Let's look at blockchain. What would happen is that your asset is now kept on a blockchain smart contract. Owner or the founder of that game in by no means, by no means can take away that asset from you. And you can take that from, because it's on a technology, you can move it from one wallet to the other wallet 
and hence this is how you have solved a problem which existed in web2 world which is centralization so this is another idea right when you are thinking of building a web3 startup think of who would be your potential participants for example your potential participant could be gamer your potential participant could be your investor who believes in an idea your potential participant could be a user and the fourth is your governing body member which means anyone who wants to take participate who wants to participate in the governance of that particular business model right when it's a game a governance body will decide that how many rewards how much reward should we give to the players who are engaging in the game it's not i me or one or two person who decide this it's a governing body that's the difference that's another thing to look at in the web3 world and thirdly one important thing is to identify that the third important thing which is you need to identify is that web3 adoption is happening as we talk it's ongoing so when you are looking at web3 always include a portion of rewarding or incentivizing the participants that would be that would become your promoters but at the same time always keep in mind that beat web3 or web2 or web whatever right whichever technology you are using the revenue has to be always more than the rewards that you are giving so don't end up building another play to earn x to earn move to earn blah 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 to earn model where there is no revenue and there is just reward 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 and token okay so let's see a video okay great so uh that's it that's it from uh that's it from a very crux i'm happy to take it more if you guys want to if you guys would like to uh listen more of my <laughs> a lessons that i've learned over the last 5 years working in uh, crypto and blockchain but i would not take more time uh, and let you go for the match happy to take questions i'm still on my time uh thank you sir uh, so like we had a few questions uh, in the chat box so like uh, let's take up uh, one by one so like i'm not able to see the chat box how do, how do i see that uh uh siddhant uh, is there a way like i think you have to uh, allow me allow me to chat something like that probably uh so like uh, i can uh, like uh, tell you the questions verbally yeah, yeah please go ahead please go ahead yeah so like uh, the question is what is your approach as a crypto web3 startup when governments and people are now having a bearish or fearful view on the complete sector uh okay great question first of all the government is not having a fearful view of the sector let me clear it out right what the government is trying to do today is they are trying to they are trying to uh, understand the regulations around crypto so that they can ensure that the people don't lose money because there are so many scams happening in the market so it's just that they are trying to identify the right compliance they're not against it but they are saying that uh, we need more time to build it so some governments in the world like switzerland like uh, middle east dubai abu dhabi um, africa the caribbean they are a little more let's say you know accepting the technology but as far as indian government is concerned they are also working towards it i'm i'm reading a lot of articles coming out we are meeting a lot of government officials day in and day out who are trying to and we are even working with these officials to uh, help them uh, in drafting these regulations and uh, compliances that's number one and to answer a question about uh, people's view so as a matter of fact right now the entire global economy is a little facing uh, challenges and hence it's not just one industry it's every industry you look at it, the stock market nasdaq nse any stock exchange everything is facing some challenges hence it's a global phenomenon not just one industry phenomenon uh, thank you sir uh, for the answer uh, pranav has a question like he is asking till now we have witnessed applications of blockchain in financial systems uh, what applications uh, we can see in future like apart from financial systems 
any other area uh, I of just, application? I just, uh, I was actually sitting right just two minutes ago uh, while that guy was sitting, the founder was sitting here of implementing blockchain in a healthcare ecosystem, in a health tech company where you are decentralizing the data. You know, we have heard about so many health data leakages happening. We have seen so many health data being used in a wrong way because the user never had the access to their data. It was always either the uh, hospitals that were, or the body or the platform that was the, owning the data. But with blockchain coming into action, there have been, there are, um, there are advancements and developments happening where you see um, the users are owning their data because, because of the blockchain decentralization. That's number one. Number two, we are seeing application of blockchain in the supply chain industry. You know, I was a uh, few days ago, I met a founder and she comes from uh, Netherlands. What they're doing is they have put up at the entire supply chain of a burger on a blockchain, meaning from the organic production or the production of the ingredients to their packing, to their dispatch, to their, uh, to the received, uh, to their receiving by the uh, retailers and then being sent over to these uh, outlets. Everything is being tracked on blockchain. So when you eat a burger, you would know exactly that the cabbage, the lettuce that you have in that burger is coming from a field in uh, India produced in three months ago. And the bun that you are eating is being produced from wheat that was grown in this part of the world six months ago. And hence you have an entire, and what does this bring? This brings credibility. This brings uh, assurance that you are eating the right food. Right, so there is a application of, although Pranav, I completely agree with you. The application of blockchain in finance took a exponential pace, but that does not mean that there is other sectors are not catching up. They are now catching up, bring uh, they're coming up to the pace. I yeah. have a question from Siddharth. Like he's asking, how is metaverse related uh, with Web three? Uh, like it's very confusing for a common man like what is metaverse and what is web3 like how a common man can differentiate uh, between both thank you siddharth this is a this is fant this is a fantastic question i was addressing a crowd of around 400 people just 2 weeks ago and someone from that uh, crowd asked me i was giving a presentation on metaverse they said is metaverse and blockchain same i said no they are completely different Metaverse is, is simply a virtual presence of your universe. Universe meaning it could be a group of people. It could be a setup. That's metaverse. But when you put that metaverse on blockchain, it gets more interesting because now if I am, let's take an example of simple smart classrooms and virtual classrooms, right? When I, I'm sure you must have, you all, all know about Oculus, the virtual VR headset. When you wear that headset, you can, even today, you can play a game or be a part of a classroom, which is giving live classes or giving you a demo of something. That's, that's metaverse. Then what is web three doing in metaverse? Web three is doing just one thing. They are decentralizing that whole thing. Meaning that now whoever is creating that asset is the owner of that asset. So it becomes more interesting because now you see there are so many assets. Assets here does not mean money. Assets here mean anything that holds value. For example, if you look at an education metaverse or gaming metaverse, very simple gaming metaverse. So when you are in a gaming metaverse without web three, still the points, the um, rewards that you are earning, the assets that you are creating belongs to the owner of that metaverse. But with web three, the creator becomes the owner. Hence metaverse and web three brings together when they are clubbed together, they create more uh, utility. This is why metaverse got more famous when it, when web three came into it, that's it. But there are two different things. You can build a separate metaverse without web three. They already exist today. I mean, meta is building that meta is not web three. So it's not something which is, um, uh, which is a remote phenomenon. Yes. Uh, so yes, sir, this will help the, uh, like Lehman a lot. Uh, I had one more question from Shamik. Like he's asking many DeFi companies code uh, like the company's code is open source 
so like a person can fork them adding new changes from one side even if the uh, the possibility that the original defi company can adapt the changes so how much innovation should be there uh, that is sufficient uh, enough to edge to start a, co a successful company um yeah. so if i'll talk in timelines <laughs> if you look at this question today i would say there is a huge piece the piece of cake is big enough that even if you come up with a idea that already exists but you have a unique edge of creating more adoption i'm sure your idea will be a successful business if you have that perceive perseverance to pursue that idea but if you look at it from a perspective when you have got decent traction i mean uh, let's look at 5 years ahead from now in future uh i would say that innovation yes you're right the folks do happen there are people who you know just create a copy of another defi protocol and still get traction they are getting traction because even though they are copying one another another defi protocol but they are targeting a different market and hence they are able to get that user base but if you want to be really create a unique edge then you will just have to think of an idea of an add on feature that you can add or think of an think of it from doing it from a different perspective i'll give you a very simple example the defi didn't come it out today defi exists since 2016 when compound or maker dao actually came out with their first uh, lending and borrowing pool where in a pool of asset you can lend your money you can borrow from that pool and that pool of asset is being not controlled by one person but a governance but a governing body and those governance is not the shareholders they are different people who understands how the protocol works right but what happened in 29 2019 2020 was aggregation part came up which says that now if i can if i have one pool then how about i aggregate multiple pools and then i take money from the user in a vault which is again a decentralized smart contract address and then put that money into multiple defi protocols multiple defi platforms it start generating yield and whenever the user want they can redeem they can claim back their money that they have deposited so this was an innovation and that's where yfi called yearn finance came up right so this is how they uh, th this is how innovation started happening if you look at metaverse there are so many existing metaverse that are just being a copy of the other metaverse however what innovation you can do today is because you are starting up right in I, I, when you are start when you start working from idea you don't find that okay what would be that new thing to do you start working on an idea you start working on a concept even if it's same right even if it exists today don't worry about that start working on it when you will be developing that you would identify oh you know what if i do this task in a different way i'll be able to bring out a new idea and innovation which does not exist so that's the only slight innovation that you need to do to make your idea into a unique idea but whether it will be successful or not does not depend on the idea it actually depends on you if you are perseverant enough to you know to pursue your idea till the time you are able to achieve your dream then you will become a successful idea otherwise success idea successful idea does not actually uh comes from you know, innovations they come from uh, perseverance i mean you all have must have heard lectures on entrepreneurship so let's not do that <laughs> asad that was very nicely answered uh we had one more question uh, from one of the participants like in the current world we see a lot of scams happening uh in the nft and like uh, the web3 parts like how uh, is there a possibility that these mal practices are wiped off or there is a con uh, controlling body which can take an overall uh, look over the complete process especially the, especially this is happening more in the crypto field so if you can address this one uh two question two answers again sorry i'm 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 not giving you precise answer for one specific reason because if i give you precise answer then you will follow my thought process and i really don't want that you know blockchain is all about creating innovations creating more uh, new new things so just think i i'll give you perspectives take it think of it bring up with a new perspective and add it to me so that i can when i go to the next session uh, i'll add your perspective as well 
but okay coming to the perspective number 1 if you look at from a government point of view yes it is happening there are set, bodies being set up who are looking and looking taking care of the transactions that are happening identifying uh, the transactions that do not appear uh, true in nature that do not that are that look like are a little under the under the uh, under the you know a little shady and hence these analyst these companies are then and these uh, regulatory bodies are then coming up they are being formed they are being set up so if you i'll i'll give an example of a company called chain analysis what they do they are working with all the government organizations around the world most of them to identify the transaction tra- uh, traceability and then uh, submit a report to the government that these transactions look mal like mal tra- mal practices however that was one perspective now coming to the other part do we need it yes and no yes we need it to save the users uh, hard earned money but no because it's all about the core idea is decentralization which means that every participant should now when we once we get to more adoption once we get to wide adoption the people or the participants of that network will decide whether a transaction is right or not for example if you look at bitcoin mining right when you do a proof of work when you run proof of work or you look at and you look at any proof of stake protocol which is called when you you know you put in more you your skin is in the game so now the participants are risking their own wealth to validate a transaction hence they when once when that starts scaling up automatically the mal practices goes away because now people have their own interest in the success of the business so that's that's another perspective that you don't need a body to do that probably what you need is more participation from the uh, users uh, sir we have one more question like uh, you being uh, a person who is involved in blockchain and web3 for the last uh, uh, many years what do you think are the cons regarding the technology like uh, some loopholes which uh, should be changed or which should be improved upon uh very nice question i think i'll answer this question in the context of the topic today itself you know the web3 startup when you are working on your idea blockchain because it brings you know decentralization hence it also means that now you have to create a reward mechanism to bring adoption one of the loop i won't call it a loophole i would i would just call it as call it as uh, the early phase right because we are early in nature we are early in this industry so i don't see particularly any loophole the right word that you have used is loophole i don't see a loophole in this technology because it is solving problems however scalability is one um, as we like to call it blockchain trilemma right where you are achieving scalability transparency at the same time is still not achieved to its full potential so we need more uh, innovations happening in this field where we make the blockchain truly truly decentralized today we don't see a lot of truly decentralized applications other other than few of them most of them are still centralized in nature although the idea is novel the idea is to create decentralized uh, protocol but still centralization exists to a to a good level extent and hence which obviously will come you know as we move forward towards more adoption more information more symmetrical information i think that's where we'll be able to solve this problem so that was well answered uh, aditya has another question what are the alternative business models for web3 companies to be followed alternative business models sorry i could you unmute him so that he can explain the question yes sir so he can unmute himself hello aditya
so i think there is some network issues from his end uh, we'll take another question like uh, how does the uh, web3 and blockchain companies earn profit like uh, what is the uh, process by which like uh, these companies are surviving in the market uh oh, that's uh, interesting because it's just like any other business model they have a revenue stream and they have an expense stream the only difference is that now there is no a shareholder it's a token holder and the token that there are transactions happening which are represented by tokens there's that's the only difference so other than that the business model is same they have revenue model that's that, see that's a, such an amazing question do you understand the kind of information asymmetry that exists today i mean we are, we are here one you know we are we're talking to the brilliant minds and still there is a there is a confusion regarding whether there is a different business models for web3 no that's not right the business model is same there is a revenue model there is a, a revenue stream and there is a expense stream now can you imagine that what would be happening with the people who are not even close to 1% of the kind of information that you people have so that's the kind of la- la- information asymmetry we are sitting at people and you know back in 2020 2000 2001 to 1998 when uh, the world of web 1.0 was coming up it the situation was exactly the same there were some people who understood it more but there was so as much asymmetry that it took more than 12 years for a country like or a 8 to 10 years for a country like india to come out with their first unicorn to come out with their first mark e-commerce marketplace right so that's the kind of asymmetry we have just but just to uh, coming back to the question no the business model is same you have to build make a revenue stream how would you how would people pay for your business and then you have to make an expense stream of how, who would you pay to help you in building your business simple but the only difference is that all of these transactions will not be happening by you it will be happening on a smart contract through a piece of code and hence it will be represented by transactions that's it everything else remains same that i hope will explain the technology and the process a uh, uh, last but not uh, i have a last question like it is common to each and every one if we plan to dive into web3 blockchain technology what should be our way ahead like we are in the second or third year maybe some uh, like we are in our college days so what should be our approach uh, our way ahead to pursue a career in blockchain and web3 this question will be like haunting a lot of people uh, i think so uh, as a matter of fact blockchain and web3 is a world of young minds and that's what we have uh, seen right up till now entrepreneurs uh, in web3 are uh, of of less than 25 years of age mostly the, the only reason is because they understand technology better number one the gen z's understand the use case of technology better right and hence they have a edge in um, participating in building web3 so if you are in your second year or third year it doesn't matter if you have an idea which you think exi- can solve a problem in web3 through web3 start working on it start working on it and you know the best thing about web3 is because of its decentralization decentralized nature you need not be at always at the forefront to lead your business you will have a governance to lead to make your, to do your to do the business while you are you will be one of the members of that governing protocol the governing body so there will be a governance there will be a dao that will come up a decentralized autonomous organization that will come up to uh, help in running your business but if you have an idea don't wait probably there are a couple of things that you can do first of all go and explore good information channels i'll put some of them here i don't know how can i write in chat but i'm not able to write Uh, so you can uh, you can share it uh, with me via mail like i'll uh, forward it to like, sure. uh, the whole community sure. like I, i'll just yes them. sure so tra- i'll i'll still mention it trade dog is one uh, the name it's a it's a platform for getting analysis from the markets not just trading but more on the research side as well number 2 recruin is a uh, platform to which helps in 
blockchain jobs and internships and careers in web3 that's number 2 and number 3 bistone which you are which you can uh, participate in if you have an idea in web3 submit your idea start working on it and i think uh, you know you will get the required mentorship to build your idea further thank you sir like uh, that uh, would really help the audience like i like to express my sincere gratitude uh, to mr rishav gupta for enlightening us uh, with insights on web3 technology i hope that the audience have got a great insight from today's session and are now charged up to take that extra step and do something beneficial and helpful for the society thank you all for being such a patient and inquisitive audience i would like to again thank dr mr rishav gupta for his valuable time and guidance thank you sir thank you so much uh, thank you so much everyone and good news is four overs 46 runs so we are going good thank you thank you sir bye 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 we'll be sharing the recordings uh, soon thank you exactly session <laughs>